It is absolutely gorgeous outside, and we are delighted to have you join us today. So for those of you that are joining us for the very first time, we want to welcome you to our webinar slash podcast. Um, we are recording this episode, and if you'd like to see it again, it is available on YouTube. And um, give us a couple of days to just do some editing, and it'll be up and available. If you go to our YouTube channel, we do have some additional videos from our past episodes of our podcast and a lot of our great content we'd love to share with you. You know, um, since the COVID-19 outbreak in February, March, depending on, you know, whose records you're looking at, but, you know, most of us, I think we're like on day 120 or 100, what is it now, Matt, 130? 125 now officially uh, of our quarantine, and we have been doing these types of uh, meetings in our in our brick and mortar facilities in our office, and because of COVID nineteen, we have all had to adapt to some changes, obviously, and we are now recording on Zoom and providing still amazing content for you. So, you know, I know that a lot of you may uh, that are joining us for the first time are facing some tough times right now. You're 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 dealing with some adversities, some challenges, some unknown factors. Uh, there's a lot happening uh, in our world, not just here in the United States. Everyone thinks that, you know, everything that's happening is only here in the U.S. And, uh, you know, th there's w this is a worldwide problem that we're all facing today. And all that really means is that at a point when we're facing times like this is that we need to come together as a human race, that we need to come together and be resilient because we have faced many adversities, maybe not to this magnitude. Some of you are relatively young and have not experienced some of the things in the past. But, you know, we have faced other adversities and, you know, we've always come through it. And so I want you to know that as we continue to do what we do every single day, that you have to be stronger now. You've got to be mentally tough now more than ever. And so, you know, we want to provide you great content. We don't want you to feel that a virus, you know, COVID-19 is going to hijack your life, okay? Yes, you have to quarantine. Yes, you have to wear a face mask when you go out uh, as you're going to get groceries or whatever. You know, uh, this is not a hoax. I mean, I, I hear people say that this is uh, not real, and I'm not quite sure what they're referring to when hundreds of thousands of people are dying. Um, I know some people said, well, it's only 1%. Yeah, it's 1%, but it's only, uh, that's what they're reporting is 1% are the deaths. They're not reporting the, uh, the other people that are, that, that this can have a long-term effect, whether it's, you know, for their heart, their lungs, their, you know, their cognitive abilities, anything else. I mean, there are a lot of other ancillary issues that come from COVID-19 and, it's not just the elderly. It is attacking a lot of the younger people today as well. Um, middle, middle age. I mean, I know my friends. I have good friends that I have lost. And I have um, associates of mine whose parents have they've lost. I mean, this is definitely a time of crisis. But we have to still continue to make a living. We still have to provide for our family, right? And so we're trying to do whatever we can to provide you as much content uh, to help you grow and to, to, to deal with what you're facing today. And so, you know, every week we do something. Let me bring up my PowerPoint here. Uh, let's see, is this it? Yeah. All right. I believe you should be looking at that. Great. So, um, do I have a clicker here somewhere? No, no clicker? All right. Um, so next week on Tuesday, I am bringing in a man named Mauricio Bauza. Mauricio has been an entrepreneur for a very long time, and he will be joining us to provide you some great content. Next week at 6.30 Pacific time, you do have to register. So if you've got a camera right now or whatever you've got, just take a picture of this and you'll get the uh, information to register. And as you register for this event, make sure, or when you go to the site, that you know that it is case sensitive. So all these uppercase letters, you need to make sure that you use these uppercase letters, okay? Um, it'll be great, I promise you. Uh, Mauricio is an amazing speaker, and he will provide you some, some great content, okay? 
Now, I am sorry to tell you that next week on Saturday, uh, I will be canceling our episode of Shintastic Saturday. Not that I want to, but we are going to be hosting an event. Uh, another event that day and we need to prepare for that and we've got uh, some amazing speakers and we want you to register for this event now this is a little bit different these so I do these by the way three times a week every Tuesday nights uh, at 6 30 uh, Thursdays in the afternoon from 2 to 3 and then on Saturday mornings as we are here today from 11 a.m. till 12 o'clock so uh, yeah this so next Saturday we will be canceling this due to the fact that we're doing a one day coaching program and mentoring with a guy named Randy Spelling, many, many other speakers, including myself. There is a fee, it's only $197. And a lot of you may say, well, who is Randy Spelling? Well, Randy is an expert in personal development. He's been uh, coaching people for a few decades now. And, ooh, excuse me. And many of you may know his father, his name was Aaron Spelling. And his father was a Hollywood icon. I mean, he made some amazing television shows from uh, a hit TV show called The Love Boat, uh, Charlie's Angels. Uh, gosh, there's so many 90210, uh, Melrose Plays, not to mention a lot of big movies as well. Now, his sister is a lady named Tori Spelling. And so you may know Tori and Tory sibling is Randy's. OK, so Randy and several other speakers and myself were doing this. We do have some space available for you to register for this. You do have to register down here at Anna at TGRmastermind.com, Anna at TGRmastermind.com. Uh, we are being selective to who we want to get into this program. We just want to make sure that it's the right fit. It may not be for everyone, but as you register, if you email Anna at TGRmastermind, you will receive a call from us. We are going to ask you a few questions to make sure you're the right fit. So if you are, we want to put you in this program and help you navigate through your, your through, navigate through these tough times, your business, okay? So it's going to be an amazing Saturday. It'll be next week, Saturday, July 25th. Make sure that you register for this event, okay? Now, for those of you that are joining us for the very first time, you're like, okay, who is this guy, John Shin? What is this podcast webinar all about? So let me tell you what it's all about, okay? Um, we read, my, my wife and I, Arlene, and I read a book that was written in 1937. Uh, this book called Think and Grow Rich, written by Napoleon Hill, which is, I, it, you know, it is classified as a timeless classic. It really, really is. And we had never heard of this book, and, uh, and uh, one of our mentors had suggested we read it if we want to be entrepreneurs. So we decided to read it. We didn't have Amazon. Uh, in the early or in the mid 90s, we actually had to go to a bookstore, buy the book. And as you know, and, and uh, you know, when you first buy a book, you kind of skim through it to see how many chapters there are and how you want to attack this book. You know, you want to do like one chapter a day, a chapter a week, you know. And so as I'm flipping through it, I said, you know, it's, it's, it's a good, it seems like it's a short read. I'll, I'll do like a chapter a day. And so we began reading it. We had our highlighters out. We started to read this book and I couldn't put it down. It is the, 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 the holy grail, the godfather. It is the, the epitome of leadership and development, personal development. And Napoleon Hill was a reporter, and he approached a man by the name of Andrew Carnegie. Now, if you don't understand who Andrew Carnegie is, you should Google this man, because I could probably spend a few hours talking about each one of these names, but there you go, Andrew Carnegie. Uh, he interviewed Thomas Edison. He interviewed Henry Ford and Theodore Roosevelt, the Wright brothers, the John D., the Rockefeller families, right? Uh, and many more. In fact, Napoleon Hill, actually during the time of crisis, the Great Depression is when he was doing all this stuff, right? So instead of letting the Great Depression hijack his life, he went out there and began interviewing all these other successful business owners and entrepreneurs and thought leaders and experts during their era. And he came up and discovered 13 common denominators of all these amazing people. And it took him 25 years to do that. And now this book has sold over 200 million copies around the world. Now, 
you may not know how many books each book sells on an annual basis, okay? Now, if you think of all the wonderful books that are out there and the millions and millions of books that have been written over the years, uh, only five books have ever sold over 500 copies, okay? Number one is Think and Grow Rich, not in any particular order, okay? Uh, one is called Think and Grow Rich. The second one is The Bible. The third one is Harry Potter. Number four is Lord of the Rings. And number five is The Twilight Saga, okay? So since 1937, those are the only five books. Three of those are fictitious, okay, in my opinion. Some of you may disagree, all right? But just my opinion, all right? Uh, this book is an absolute must read, not only for yourself, but for your children, your spouse. Uh, everyone needs to read this book. It is an international best-selling sensation. And so after I read this book, applied the principles, we got to a, a very good place financially ourselves. And not just think and grow rich. And when we say rich, it's not just rich, you know, monetarily, financially, but to be rich in your marriage and relationships and love and faith and just all areas of your life. Uh, great book. All right. Now, my partners and I, we got the privilege and the honor from the Napoleon Hill Foundation, the rights to make a movie called Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy. And so uh, we put up our money and we made this movie so that we could, we, so that we can, our intention was not to make money, okay? I mean, if we can recover what we invested, that's great. Uh, but our intention was to get this book, okay? This book here uh, on a theatrical screen so that the younger generation could actually watch this movie and learn from these uh, entrepreneurs from the past. So we uh, went and did a theatrical release with AMC, a very limited theatrical release. We didn't have the budget of these big mega movie producers like Disney and MGM, you know, where they have movies out in the theaters for a long time. We were there for a limited period of time. Then we went to digital, and then we went to things like Amazon Prime. We did get an offer from uh, Netflix, which we declined, and we uh, got a, we accepted a deal with Walmart. So a couple of months ago, we were supposed to be in all the Walmart stores, and then of course, because of COVID nineteen, we made a decision along with the uh, with all with along with Walmart to release this next year through all the different store retail operations of Walmart. So we were able to get the, uh, the rights to actually show this. And uh, uh, through this time of difficulty, we're doing a special movie night, a movie screening uh, uh, on August 7th on Friday. So we want to encourage you, your family, your children, to get around your TV and watch this book come to life on your television, okay? Or your movie theater, depending on, uh, you know, if you've got a theater in your house or not, okay? We have been asked to feature this also in the Philippines. We are broadcasting this as well in the Philippines. Many people in the Philippines have been, have been watching this, and they have requested us to show this in the Philippines as well. So, again, you do have to register down below. You'll see it highlighted. Uh, you'll see the arrows going to it. Make sure that you register for this called Thinking Grow Rich, the legacy come to life. All right. Now, for those of you that can't uh, be there, but you want to watch it, it is available on my website at johncshin.com. Uh, we are offering this movie package for $25. And so, um, you know, please get the book and, you know, maybe get a bunch, okay, and hand them out for the holidays. Now, can you imagine the holidays? Like Christmas will be here in no time, it feels like. So now there's this book called Thinking Grow Rich, which has been re-released uh, re with the unedited version of Napoleon Hill's writing. So this is now available on Amazon. Uh, Thinking Grow Rich, A Black Choice was released by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. We have The Latino Choice by Lionel Sosa. Thinking Grow Rich for Women by Sharon Lecter who is also the co-founder and the former CEO of Rich Dad, Poor Dad Corporation for 10 years. And she helped write a lot of the content for the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So now she's got uh, the Thinking Grow Rich movie, uh, excuse me, the Thinking Grow Rich, she is in the movie as well, but she's got the Thinking Grow Rich for women. And I have the tremendous honor to be amongst these amazing people, to be a member of their faculty. As I wrote, I am the Think and Grow Rich Asian version of, um, of all these series of books. So I highly recommend that you guys uh, get all of them, read them. You don't have to be black, Latino, or a woman or Asian to read it. 
um, it, 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 you really should read it to understand where black people are coming from, where Latinos are coming from, where are women coming from, and even Asians, okay? So highly recommend you read all of them, all right? Now, having said that, just so you know, in my book, we've got some great stories. Uh, Jack Ma, Elon Musk, Dwayne Johnson, Steve Aoki, and many, many, many others. And what was the one thing that had their career be the turning point for them all disclosed in this awesome book. So we're unleashing some secrets in this. Please make sure you get a copy. It is available right now on Amazon, okay? Uh, for the ebook, not at $27.95, not at $24. We've got this ebook version right now available for just $2.99, okay? So if you wanna know all these great secrets, go to Amazon this afternoon, get a copy of this while you can while the price is still at $2.99. Uh, we are offering this special uh, Kindle price for a limited time, and I'd love to have you get this book, okay? Now, then we went on a tour called Think and Grow Rich, the Legacy World Tour. We ventured off to, our intention was to go to 12 countries, 34 states, and with COVID-19, this has now come to a screeching halt. And it's what I learned during this tour, though, last year, was pretty amazing, you know, though my intention was to go and help other people, educate them and provide them my experience and my knowledge, uh, I learned a lot, you know, sharing the stage with people like Condoleezza Rice, um, Barbara Corcoran from the hit TV show called Shark Tank, okay? And Barbara is amazing, amazing lady, just not just in business, but her heart and her soul. She is such a generous, amazing woman. If you ever get a chance to meet her, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Martin Sheen uh, uh, and I both sat as former officers of the Manny Pacquiao Foundation. Uh, we've got Rob Dyrdek, who is in the movie Think and Grow Rich, along with Barbara Corcoran and Sharon Lecter. And, you know, uh, during my tour, I had an opportunity to have some meetings with Stedman Graham. I don't know if you all know who Stedman is, but he flew out from Chicago out to my house here in Calabasas, California. We had a great meeting and talking about what we wanted to do together next year, which was really this year. We had these discussions last year. And Stedman is another man who's extremely generous. And if you don't know who his wife is or significant other spiritual partner, business partner, uh, that would be Oprah Winfrey. And so uh, another amazing, iconic individual. So Stedman, by the way, is 6'9". He's a very tall man. He used to be a former basketball player. And so you're looking at this picture and you're like, whoa, um, he, uh, John, you're taller than him. Bless you, by the way. So uh, th the reason why I'm taller than him in this picture is because that is what folding chairs are all about. So it's a pretty funny picture. So I hope you got a chuckle out of that. It's my son in the background. If you're looking at, hey, there's, who's that kid? That's uh, my son, Andrew, who photobombed our picture. But anyway, um, Steve Aoki also, these are some friends of ours. Uh, Ralph and Adriana, and of course, that's my wife standing next to Steve. And then um, Mario Lopez, been on his show a couple times, and he and I are working on a joint uh, book together as a co-author of a book, which will be coming out. Uh, we were sharing the stage and hosting some uh, awards galas. And uh, last year, my wife and I got knighted by the Royal Order of Constantine the Great and St. Helen. And what an amazing honor that was, because growing up as a kid, I always enjoyed movies of medieval times and chivalry and you know kings and queens and all that and who would have ever thought that my wife and i would be knighted you know and so this is my wife who is now officially a dame and so you know i tell you all these things not to sound braggadocious i hope i didn't turn you off and if i did it wasn't my intention to to be braggadocious but you know your life could be this way okay and people ask us all the time, like, how did it happen? When was the turning point? You know, how do you manage your day? All these different questions that we're so happy that we can provide this kind of information to you. But what, how did all this happen for us? Number one is when we pray, okay? And when you pray for things, you ever wonder, like, when you pray, you ask God for things. And you ever wonder that maybe God may be sending you uh, what you're asking for in a different package, right? So maybe right now you're praying for an opportunity. You're praying for more money. You're praying for, you know, uh, uh, the love of your life, you know, you know, a better health. I mean, I don't know what you're praying for, but I believe that every time you pray for something, 
that God works in mysterious ways and he will open doors for you. Okay. If you're praying for money and you're saying, God, I want a million dollars, please send me a million dollars. You know, he may, I don't know, he works in mysterious ways, but I don't know if he'll send you a FedEx package with a million dollars in a briefcase. Okay. But he may open the door for you. He might introduce you to somebody, right? And so you got to look for those things. In fact, Napoleon Hill says in the book, Thinking Grow Rich, he says that in every uh, adversity, in every adversity lies the seed of something of equal or greater value, right? So if you're facing some adversity, you know, why is that adversity happening to you, right? And, and, and uh, for you, it's not happening to you, it's happening for you, okay? You've heard that so somewhere before maybe. And so... The fact that you're here today, right? There's a lot of things you can be doing on this beautiful Saturday morning, okay? Or Saturday afternoon if you're in a different time zone. But, you know, something, you know, why are you here? And so the person who invited you, maybe a new door is opening up for you and you have to recognize it, okay? You've, you've got to, your mind's got to be like a parachute, right? It's got to be open or it's not going to work, okay? You've got to be open-minded to things. And so... Another thing that happened for us, how it happened for us is, is timing. You know, we, we were both, my wife and I were at the right place at the right time. We, I shouldn't say we, she recognized an opportunity, a window. And what she did is she went back and started to research all the businesses in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and on and on and on. And so when she showed me this timeline, I, you know, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, okay? I'm not that, I mean, I'm, I'm not dumb, but I'm not brilliant like some people think. Um, I'm definitely not one of those nuclear scientists and know how to create a, a rocket ship that can, you know, go to space. But I mean, I've got common sense, okay? I'm, you know, I'm looking at this, I'm like, it's not just coincidence that when 80 million babies were born between 1946 and 1964, and suddenly the baby industry started skyrocketing. And then after that, not only was it Johnson and Johnson and Gerber food, but then Mattel corporation and Hasbro, they started doing well. And then from there it was McDonald's and KFC, the fast food revolution. Then from there, uh, we saw another industry, right? I mean, just, you gotta just look at this and the demand that these baby boomers had for products. Okay. And services. Then all of a sudden the auto industry, and then came the technology era in the nineties. And then in the 2000s, it was real estate. They all wanted to buy their house finally. And here we are, folks, in the year 2020, and the first baby boomer was born in 1946. They turned 74 years of age this year. What do you think baby boomers are thinking about now? Exactly, right there, it says it, right? Uh, retirement. So as they're focusing on retirement, I would tell you that right now, more than ever, is an opportunity where you can go into the financial industry and really help a lot of people and at the same time make some money for you. Now, some of you may say, no, I, don't ever, I never saw myself in the financial service industry. Neither did I. I never ever thought in my wildest of wildest of dreams that I would be in this, in this industry, okay? But I want you to know that this industry is the means to your end. Whatever it is, I've always, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a movie producer, right? Those are things that I love to do. That's like my dream, okay? My dream was not to be in the financial service industry. When I was five years old and my teacher or principal or whoever, my Cub Scout master said, Johnny, when you grow up, what do you want to be? I never said, I want to be in the financial service industry, right? I said things like, I want to be a movie star. I want to be a movie producer. I want to have a star in Hollywood, right? I would say things like that. And so that's my dream. But because of this business, I've been able to do the things that I've always wanted to do to pursue and uh, the dreams I've always wanted to have, okay? So I believe that this is the vehicle for many people and also acknowledge the fact that, you know, what we do, financial education, Financial literacy is an absolute necessity uh, in the world. In fact, in the United States here in 2012, 37 states required sex education, okay? Now, folks, I'm not trying to be anti, you know, uh, I'm not trying to be uh, uh, like, I don't, I don't believe in sex education. I, I just believe that if our children are old enough 
to, or, or they're old enough to learn sex, then they're old enough to learn how money works, okay? So, but right now, only four states required financial literacy courses, okay? Now, in 2015, okay, let's see, 2015, we added one state, which was Alabama. Now, in 2020, we added two more states, which is Iowa and North Carolina. So we have a total of seven states right now in our union of 50 states that require financial education in our high schools. And this is so sad because now our children are growing up and they don't know the difference between a stock and a mutual fund. They don't know the difference between a UIT and an ETF. They don't know the difference between a, an IRA and a Roth IRA or you know, active management versus passive management. They don't know if they should, what's better? Should I lease a car or should I buy a car? What are the differences? When can I buy a house? When, what should I think about when I'm buying a home? What do I look for? So, you know, other countries are educating their children in high school and even in junior high. But in our country, we only got seven states in our high school system. And even in our collegiate level, many of our universities aren't teaching our children about money either. So it's really, really sad when you look at people, uh, successful people, when you look at you know, people like Will Smith, uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, uh, Steve Aoki, Mark Wahlberg, the list goes on, Jennifer Lopez, okay? All these people, you may think of them as just a movie star, an actor, a singer, or whatever. They're not just a singer and an actor or whatever you might think they are. They're really amazing business people. They understand how money works. When I look at a doctor who makes four, five, six hundred thousand dollars and they got no money and they're bankrupt, right? These are doctors, medical doctors, okay? So why is it that because you know doctors go out, start their own practice, and then they fail and close up and they don't do well? It's because no one taught them about money and how money works. So today I want to talk to you about the six pillars to secure your financial future, all right? Number one is this, is, is increasing your cash flow. Uh, now more than ever, Robert Allen wrote a book called Multiple Streams of Income, Multiple Streams of Income. And I do believe that you should have multiple streams of income, but I think that if you have a job right now, you should start another business, okay, as a backup to your job and get out of that what I call active management or active income. What I mean by active is you're exchanging time for money, okay, exchanging time for money. So instead of, you know, going and working for an hourly wage and working for a salary on a given, for a year, you know, or a monthly income, stop focusing on active income and start focusing on passive and residual income. And so now more than ever, you need to increase that cash flow of yours but before you start going into like two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of businesses and industries, focus on one first, okay? Focus on one business, make a seven figure income and an eight figure income. And then from there, you can start to go and explore other businesses, but you can't start a business and focus on, you know, 10 things at the same time. Focus 150% on one business and then, you know, now you can start looking at other things, okay? So let's talk about um, helping you manage your debt. Get out of debt as quickly as possible. Uh, number three, have an emergency fund. Well, you can tell right now more than ever, best time to start saving money for your uh, emergencies. Most of you should have reduced expenses nowadays. And so why not start an emergency fund, okay? Proper protection, secure your uh, future by saving money for long-term. And number six is to protect your assets, okay? These are the six steps to financial security. Write them down, take a picture of it. Now, what I'm doing is every Thursdays at two o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I am offering a free complimentary uh, education on how money works. All those things I teach you here, I'm going to teach you here. So, you know, there's a lot for you to learn. Things like, hey, should I have a corporation? How do I minimize my taxes? How do the rich people not have to pay so much in taxes? All these different things we're going to teach you here. Please join us at Thursdays at 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, okay? Now, when you're sick, where do you go? Okay, you typically go to a hospital, right? Now, when you go to a hospital, you have a doctor, and then the doctor then sends you off to all these different specialists. And so when I recognized this in 1996, 
as my wife gave birth to our first child, Matthew, uh, we had Kaiser insurance at that time. And so we went to Kaiser and I really was just, you know, it's, it, you know, everywhere I go, I'm always thinking, you know, I go to a restaurant and it's packed. I'm like, wow, these guys got some good business going on. Right. Or I go to some venue and there's a lot of people. I'm already like, I'm already thinking like, how much are they making? What's their profitability? I'm sure. What are their expenses? What did it take to organize this event? You know, I'm always thinking business. So I was in the hospital and I'm like, wow, this hospital really has it together. Very efficient uh, at Kaiser. And so I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. I want my vision and as I shared it with my wife, Arlene, I said, honey, I said, I, I think we should own a financial hospital. That's what we need to do is create a, a company where we can offer just like they did here, right? We can offer all these different things and have experts here in different areas of the financial industry. So we, we offer uh, quite a bit here. We've got experts in the lending business. We have merchant processing. We've got experts there. We've got property and casualty. We offer insurance. We do annuities, college planning, retirement, uh, registered investment advisory, um, estate planning and debt settlement, tax planning. We got it all. So we have created a one-stop shop. And in the 90s, when we started this, everyone said, oh, this isn't going to work. You're like the jack of all trades. But understand, we're not the jack of all trades, okay? It's like having a hospital and having experts, right, in their medical area or their specific area of, of medicine in a hospital. We're no different, right? It's no different than going to a large law firm and realizing that there's experts in law, right? You've got patent copyright lawyers. There's corporate lawyers. There's, you know, um, um, there's litigators that are professionals, right? Criminal lawyers are experts, right? Uh, uh, real estate transaction lawyers, uh, estate planning lawyers. There's all different types of lawyers, immigration lawyers. It's no different what we've created here. And as everyone said, this wasn't going to work. We've now opened up offices in all 50 states. We have an office up in Canada. Uh, we've got over 200 offices now operating. These are brick and mortar, uh, though we are all now working out of our house, but we do have brick and mortar facilities all around the country, okay? So I have invested in a lot of different businesses, and I got to tell you, I mean, everything from e-commerce to solar panels to valet parking to farms to real estate, commercial, industrial, residential, we, we have owned it all, and I, and I highlighted financial because number one, it's been the most lucrative, the most lucrative. It's been the least amount of headaches for us. And what I really loved about this is the fact that what we did provided an essential business, okay? Getting out of debt is an essential thing, okay? That's not a luxury. We got to get you out of debt. That is a need. And number two is um, I wanted to, uh, the financial industry provides passive and residual income. So as I talked to you guys about passive and residual, one of my favorite slides is this right here. It says that if you don't come out of this quarantine or stay in home order with a new skill, a new knowledge, a new side hustle, a new business, then you didn't lack time, but you lack discipline, okay? You can't be watching TV and be, you know, glued to some series and binge on TV during a time of crisis. Excuse me, you've got to learn something new, a new skill. You've got to start making more money. You can't just play victim, okay? Like if you're going to die, like die fighting for something, okay? You can't sit there and expect the government to bail you out and expect all these politicians to solve all your problems, okay? You need to step up, be mentally tough, inject a massive amount of discipline into you, okay? And go do something right now. Make more money, all right? And then look, and then you're gonna have more passive income and residual income. And I want you to know that there is a difference, okay, between the two. This is some examples of passive income. And then of course, here's some examples of residual income. So we wanna offer you advice. How do you start a business right now? And I want you to know that it's taken us 30 years to try different systems, and we, we adopted the systems that worked for us. We created some systems and we, we have all the systems in place now for you to be successful, right? Whether it's business format systems, financial systems, licensing systems, any kind of business you start, you're gonna need a license. Any, you wanna open up a restaurant, you get a license, okay? You wanna become a cosmetologist and do hair, you gotta go get a license. 
You want to sell real estate, you got to get a license. You want to go sell investments and stocks and stuff like that, insurance, you got to get a license. Everything requires licensing if you want to make money, okay? Big money, that is. Personal development systems, leadership systems. We've got it all down to a science. Now, it's up to you. It's for you to make some decisions about what you want to do with your life. Go in and finding your purpose, your calling, your passion. Okay, what, do you, what is it that you love to do? What is it that you would do for the rest of your life? Okay, that even if you didn't get paid or made little money, you would love doing it, okay, because you're passionate about it. So for me, people say, you know, John, you really work hard. And I look at them and I'm like, what, what do you mean? I said, I don't work. And they go, what do you mean you don't work? I mean, you work like 20 hours a day. And I go, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm enjoying my hobby. Like right now, talking to all of you, this isn't work, right? This is, this is something I love to do. Coaching, mentoring, right? Encouraging people, uh, inspiring people, motivating people. That's like a calling. That's not work. I'll tell you what work is, right? Go, go to my ranch and look at all the weeds that are growing on my ranch and cutting all those weeds down. That's work when it's 110 degrees outside. That's work, okay? This is not work. This is something that I love to do. And I am just looking for a few people that I can coach, that I can mentor. And I've got a special boot camp that's coming up. I'm gonna show you guys a slide here at the end and how you can register for this boot camp. But I've got a boot camp that's coming up on August 8th, okay? August 8th. And it's called M. T C M T C and what M T C stands for is make that change, make that change. So what is that change? What is, and it doesn't, so for some people, it doesn't even have to be that big of a change, but just a little tweak in something that you can do. It's kind of like a car, you know, sometimes it needs a tune up job, right? Uh, you know, when you're playing a guitar and you know, you're playing the guitar and you're trying to get a tune, and it, it, the sound isn't right. You take it, your, your guitar and you tune it up a little bit, right? Your piano, you got to get it a tune-up job so it sounds perfect. Some of you just need a little tune-up job and then you'll be humming, right? So I would love, and it would be a privilege and an honor for me to help mentor some of you, not all of you, okay? Because some of you, uh, uh, I don't think you're that serious, right? You, you really don't want to make any, uh, make any massive changes in your life. You're comfortable, right? You, you, you don't have big dreams, okay? And if you don't have big dreams, I can't help you. You've got to have some big dreams. In fact, Dr. Martin Luther King said that most people die at the age of 25. We just don't bury them until they're 85 because you've given up. Like even like a time like right now, when I say right now, during a time of world crisis, a pandemic, there are certain people still making money, right? Jeff Bezos is still making money. Facebook is still making money. Zoom, the platform we're using right now, is making money. Shopify is making money. Wayfair is making money, right? Amazon is making money. Everybody's making money. Not everybody. A lot of people are making money still. So when you hear the news, right, and they say things like, you know, the stock market is crashing. It's not crashing, okay? It's stable right now, and it's still growing, and people are making money in the stock market. Now, if you're like saying, well, where, who's making money in the stock market? Well, that's another conversation you and I should have face-to-face, -face, right? Via Zoom, not like together, live, you know? But let's have that conversation. But there are people making money. I can tell you I'm making money. In the last four or five months, my income has increased tremendously. I'm like, you know, I don't even want to say it that loud, because um, I'm going to have the haters hate me for me making money, right, during a time of crisis. But, you know, I'm making money because, because I'm providing solutions to people, right? People are in need of a pro – they're looking for a, a need of a solution for their problem. And so I've got the strategies, right? People, you know, if you've got the problems, I've got the strategies, and I'm making money. And so you can also help these people as well. But I'm in the leadership development, right? I, I'm looking for people that I can help and, 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 and develop leaders. So if anything that I said to you today resonates in, in any, any way, in any capacity, please get with the person who invited you today. Ask them, how can I make more money? I got to make more money. I just got laid off. I've been furloughed. 
furloughed indefinitely. And even though I've been furloughed, I don't even want to go back to my employer or my job. I agree with John. I need to start building more money. I need to write a book. I need to start my own show, my own YouTube channel, my own uh, business, right? In the financial service industry, my own podcast. I don't know, a YouTube channel. Okay, you got to start somewhere and, and, and I'm, I'm willing to help you, okay, for free. Who's going to do that? Everywhere you go today, most of these other people want to charge you money and an obscene amount of money to, to help you. I don't really need to make more money. I make a lot of it and I have a lot of it already. I'm just trying to offer you some constructive uh, advice so that you can actually get your life to where it should be, okay? Get with the person and say, I want to know more about what, how money works. John is right. I got to start an emergency fund. I got to get the right insurance policy. And I don't even know what I have. You know, every time I ask somebody, do you have a life insurance policy? They'll say, yeah, I do. And I say, great. What kind of policy do you have? I don't, I don't know. What? How do you not know what kind of policy you have? If you died, would you not know how your children wouldn't even know what kind of policy you have? I kid you not. I was on the phone two, three days ago. And um, this lady was telling me, uh, she said, I go, how many insurance policies do you have? She goes, well, I got like three or four or five. And I was like, great. Who are they with? She's like, oh, I don't really know. I, I think it's with this company, this company, and this company. She had like four or five different companies. So we ended up calling together. I got the client on the phone with one of our reps. And then we called the company and we're like, hi, uh, we got the client on the phone. We'd like to ask you some questions about their policies. If you can even see, um, uh, if you could look up their account. And they're like, sure, they look it up. We looked it up on their social security number. Looked it up on a, uh, any kind of policy numbers or whatever. And the insurance company said, oh no, your policy canceled back in 2016. So here's a lady who actually thought she had life insurance, right? But the policy uh, had expired. Not that it expired, it lapsed, okay? Because of non-payment. And she didn't even know that they stopped making payments on this account. So how it stopped, nobody really knows, okay? Maybe they changed bank accounts and didn't tell the insurance company, but the policy stopped in 2016. Can you imagine if her husband or she died, their children would be like devastated because the policy uh, expired. So we hung up. I could tell on the phone that she was like, oh my God, okay? And then we called another insurance company and find out from them that there was also no insurance there. So out of the four policies or five policies that she thought she had on herself and her husband, she's only got one policy out of all of them. So it's still better than zero. But I mean, this is what I mean. We had uh, years ago, I had another lady who said she had like eight insurance policies on her husband. The husband died. Okay. And so, and then she calls the insurance company and says, uh, she calls me up and says, these insurance companies don't want to pay me. And I said, wow, that's kind of bizarre. I mean, they need to pay. I mean, if you've been paying the premiums, have you been paying the premiums? She's like, yeah. I said, okay, well then they got to pay. I go, well, why don't you bring your policies in? So she comes in, she shows me the policies. I start to read the first page and I asked her, I said, how did your husband die? She says, my husband died of a massive heart attack. I said, oh no. Well, now I can tell you why they're not paying out. She's like, why? And I said, see, see, your policies are what they call accidental death. That means that they'll only pay out if they died of an accident. And the fact that your husband died of a heart attack, these insurance policies will not pay out this claim. And their family was devastated. I mean, five kids. I mean, the husband was a school bus driver. Just de devastated, okay? And this is why I tell people, man, you got to do a checkup, right? I mean, you got to do a financial checkup with somebody and know what you have. Most people don't even know what kind of investments they've got. You know, I check my investments every day, even though the stock only trades Monday through Friday, you know, normal business days, not on holidays. But I check my investment, investments still on a Saturday. I check my investments on a Sunday. I check my credit report almost every single month, right? Are you doing these things and being fiscally responsible, okay? Because you need to, now more than ever, all right? If you have a trust, then you should have it reviewed and update your trust. If you don't have a trust, get a trust as soon as possible, all right? And so what I'd like to talk to you guys about today is leadership development. How do you develop leaders, okay? So one of the first questions is that if you want to develop leaders, I mean, you know, the first question I ask is that the person, the first person to build as a leader is yourself right? Is, is the model leader worth duplicating, right? Are you worth duplicating? Are you the model leader? Okay. 
And I want you to know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a model leader, right? I mean, I feel like I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to be the better version of me. On a daily basis, I'm trying to be a better version of me, okay? And so I always say, look, um, as long as you're green, okay, as long as you're green, you're growing. Now, when, as soon as you're ripe, you start to rot, okay? I and mean, it's the same thing with fruits, right? When you're, when you're green, it's getting better and better and better, and it's growing. But as soon as your fruit is now ripe, okay, you start to rot like a banana. You know, if you just sit, you know, when you get a green banana, it, it's growing. It turns yellow. At a certain point, right, if it, it's now, um, you know, if you don't eat it, when it becomes ripe, it turns black and it begins to rot and your banana is no longer good anymore, right? So understand that you want to be green all the time. I want to be green all the time. I never want to sit there and say, I am where I am. I'm good. I'm there. I'm at the end zone, okay? So well, another thing to develop leaders is what I call the lock and go. You can't, you cannot... Um, mentor uh, hundreds and thousands of people at a time, okay? You can teach them some lessons, okay? You can teach like I'm doing right now, but if you really want to develop leaders, you got to be hands-on, hands-on, okay? And that's why I've got this boot camp that's coming up where I'm going to tell you all about it in just a moment, okay? Now, uh, look at followers and leaders. What's the difference? Followers, they like to feel special. Okay, they want to feel special. So as a leader, you need to sincerely compliment them every day, every second. Okay, um, followers, uh, they want a better tomorrow. So what do you do as a leader? You show them hope. You provide hope. Okay, they, they, they desire direction. Followers want direction. When you go to a job, employees, okay, they, they don't take initiative. They sit there and wait for their boss to tell them what to do next. So a leader is someone that just finds things to do. You know, they go out there, they're independent. So as, as you have a bunch of followers, you give them direction, so you help navigate for them, okay? Followers are selfish, okay? Leaders, you speak to their needs first, okay? Because they're selfish, so you provide the need, okay? Uh, followers are always low emotionally. So what do you do? You encourage them. You encourage on a daily basis. Some people need it hourly, okay? Uh, followers, they want success. So what are your job as a leader? Help them win. And so there's your, some examples of what a follower does and what a leader does. So now, if you want to develop leaders, make sure that you talk to the spouse. You know, Pete uh, Rose, um, the former coach of the um, uh, uh, USC Trojans, Went off to play for, um, not play, but coach for the Seattle Seahawks. You know, I, I was talking to him one time and I said, hey, what do you do to know you've got the best athlete? Like, how do you know that this athlete is somebody that you want to take into your program at USC? Or how do you know you want to take them, you know, into professional football? And he says, you know, John, during, during the, uh, the recruiting process, for the USC Trojans, he said he would go to their house and meet the parents. And he really interviewed the parents because he said that there was a, there was a lot of you know, similarities in the way the parents were in the child and the discipline the parents had on the children. And so he wanted to make sure that he got the support of the parents first. And so, you know, I, before I wanna go and start mentoring someone and being hands-on every day, I want to meet their spouse. Will I be the person where I take somebody, develop the leaders like this, bring them up, and then I get this person that's on the sideline, their spouse, domestic partner, bless you, that's bringing them down all the time. So I build them up, they bring them down. I bring them up, they bring them down. I don't want to, you know, not make progress when people that I'm mentoring. So I want to make sure I get spousal support, Okay. Uh, I want to provide special recognition. I want to identify leaders by using different filtering systems, okay? Um, I, I have something called the eight filters. Will these people make it through this filtering system, okay? And I've got this sheet right here. I put their names down, and if I start working with somebody, I start to highlight them, right, in different colors. You know, red is like, oh, my God, I want to stay away from this new uh, prospect or, you know, recruit or mentee, right? 
uh, my young Padawans, uh, they're just too emotional for me. I want to stay away from them. Yellow, I got to proceed with caution. Oranges, you know, I scheduled an appointment. I'm not quite sure if I want to, you know, mentor them yet. They haven't gone through the interview process, right? Uh, green, completed all eight filters. And purples are broke and can't afford any products or, you know, they're just tough financially, right? Blue is that they became my clients already in some way. So I go through a filtering process, see who I'm going to work with, okay? And then um, I put them in a fast start school. I've got a school where I want to move them through. It's like a boot camp. It's like a pre-boot camp. And uh, we've got a fast start school that we put together, right? And then uh, I have something called the BBC program. It's called the Bay Shop Builders. You don't know what that is, but I put them through the BBC program. And then, of course, that boot camp I'm telling you about, Make That Change Boot Camp. And so as I talk to you about this boot camp here, Make That Change, okay, um, our next program is coming up. What does that mean? Okay, uh, never mind. So uh, when I, I'll, sh I'll show you this slide here. Uh, at the end, I guess we'll see if we can just go to a different slide PowerPoint. But um, the kind of people that I want to work with in terms of seven pointers are people that are married with children and homeowners and 25 years of age and older, has an income of at least 35,000 or more household, that they're ambitious and they're motivated, okay? These were the old uh, seven pointers, but I'm looking for people with the new pointers, and I've got nine of them. I like working pe with people that have a former military background. Uh, I want to work with people that were the firstborn child someone who played sports in the past, someone who was a, had a sales background, involved in leadership or, uh, in the past, was successful at something in the past. They're bilingual, came from a family that owned a business, has an entrepreneurial mindset. I'm looking for somebody that has one or more of these, okay? Because I think that people have one or more of these, they have what it takes to be amazing leaders, okay? Now, and then if you want to develop leaders, you got to inspect what you expect, right? It's like having a coach that comes to your house or where you go to a gym and you got somebody that inspects what you expect. They look at your fat, your weight, your water, you know, content, how much you're withholding water in your body. They analyze and examine things and expect things, which is what I want to do. I want to inspect what you expect, which is what you should be doing every day. Okay. I want to have small group meetings. You want to make sure that you're doing these kind of meetings with people, you know, have a smaller group at the house or do a, do a, a, a zoom call. Obviously people are going to get together all the time, but I have a lot of meetings at my house prior to the pandemic. That is right. Make sure it doesn't become a big gossiping and bitching session. There's no small talk, right? That's not going to make you money. Okay. That's not going to help you grow your business. You want to talk about things that are going to help you grow your company and your business. <clears throat> People need someone to believe in them. So you as a leader has got to be the first one to, you know, have more belief in someone than, than they, they have in themselves. Excuse me. So you got to do that on a constantly regular basis, okay? Treat them as what they are going to be, but not what they are presently now. So, you know, a lot of times you treat people for who they are right now. I treat people the way who they're going to be in the future. Uh, never share any negative information with your teammates and your associates and your, your uh, staff and your employees and your spouse and your children, right? Look, there's a lot. Have you ever gone to like yahoo.com? You, you know, just if you disagree with me, just try it today. Go to yahoo.com and just look at all the stuff, you know, that you read on yahoo.com. And it's just like one thing after another that's negative. It's negative. Somebody was killed. Somebody beat up somebody. There was a drive-by shooting, right? Somebody was raped. A building burned down. A child was molested. A child was kidnapped. Um, this leader ambassador did this to another ambassador of another country. This president hates this president. This politician hates that president. It's like, Wow. I mean, it's like, is there any good news? I mean, seriously, is there any, you know, there's CNN, which stands for constant negative news, right? I mean, it's like you watch those TV shows, those news, MSNBC, Fox News, all of them. They're all junk. Stop listening to the news, okay? I want to start my own TV network, call it a GNN, right? If it's not already taken, GNN. And they're like, what does that stand for? It stands for the Good News Network, right? I mean, there's, there are good things happening every day. There are good 
people out there every day, right? Making a difference when all the riots and things and like that were happening all over the country, all over the world, good people showed up with brooms, right? And trash bins and help people clean up the streets. So there are good people. There are people that are rushing into a burning building trying to save a life. No one ever talks about that kind of stuff. So there are good people. There is good news out there today, but you just got to tune into things like this, not the news to uh, get your daily updates. You know, I have a house in Vegas and uh, we went there for a couple weeks last week, you know, during the 4th of July and, you know, in our house, we have TVs, which is, I don't know why, but we have TVs everywhere, but we don't watch the TV. There's no, we don't have cable boxes. There's no, and, um, we basically said, while we're here, we're not watching any TV. We're not watching, we're not gonna go on the computer and watch anything on the computer. We're not gonna watch uh, things on our phone that has to do with the news. So for about two and a half weeks, we were there. We, it was so relaxing that we just tuned out the media, just tuned it out. Like, I feel like we should, as a nation, like ban the media. You just watch what happens. If we all stop watching the media, for just three days, things will calm down. I really will. Things will calm down. But every day, you know, more people dying, more crap happening. It's like, my God, it's like ridiculous. But I don't want to share more negatives with people, right? Do they get excited about telling their friends and family about what they do? You know, it's so bizarre that people make career changes or venture into something new, but then they don't want to tell anybody about it. They want to keep it secret. Like, why would you do that? You want to tell everybody, change it on your Facebook, right? Change it on your Instagram, your, uh, your LinkedIn, you send out newsletters, send out emails and tell everybody, Hey, I've changed careers. I'm now in the financial industry. I'm in the, you know, jewelry industry. I'm in the herbal business. I'm selling CBD. I'm in the, uh, coaching business. Tell people that you're doing that. Okay. How are, how are people going to know that that's what you do if you're trying to keep it a secret? Okay. Um, Learning how to manage your time better. If you have an associate that knows all the stuff going on in the media, the news, television shows, everyone's lives, they aren't working. You know, I, I don't even know what's going on in the world. I don't want to know what's going on in the world, right? Because there's nothing good that I want to hear. I want to go and create my, I want to go find out good stuff. You know, that's why I call the people that I do in my circle. You know, every time I text one of my friends, like, how you guys doing? You know what they say? Fired up, doing amazing Great business is rocketing, right? Spending time with my children. You know, uh, I was with, uh, not with, but Greg Reed, right? Yesterday, I don't know if you guys all know Greg Reed. And he texted me and he said something like, uh, hey, John, he said, uh, you know, I wish I can show this to you. But um, um, I'll bring it up right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, he says, he goes, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But he texted me and he goes, hey, he says, your books are at the airport. And he's like, what right so can you imagine he's telling me oh my my books are in the airport and then um i was like what are you doing he's like i'm in my backyard camping with my son <laughs> so i mean you know it's like it's so cute i mean it's so great you know people you can't be like negative and watch all this stuff on the tv man it's like get out of it working on what what are you working on right now to be the best version of you are you making phone calls? Are you doing one-on-ones? Are you out field training? Are you doing follow-ups? Though This is what you should be doing every single day, okay? And if you're like, what does that mean, field training and follow-up? Well, then tune into my podcast, and I'll tell you what it means to do. What does follow-up mean? What does field training mean? And I'm going to show you how to make some real money, okay? And then I want to identify people's strengths, cultivate their strengths. Why in the world would anybody ever focus on their weaknesses? I've never, I mean, that's just, when someone says, focus on your weaknesses, improve your weaknesses, I 100% disagree, okay? God created you with strengths and weaknesses. You focus on your strengths, and then you go find other people that have your, your weakness as their strength, and then you partner up with those people, okay? Hey, I've got weaknesses. i got a lot of weaknesses, man. There's a lot of things I'm not good at, okay? But I'm not going to go and become an expert of that. I'm going to find somebody who is an expert and then team up with them and make them my partner and part of my team. I also want to make sure that you do a lot of what they call EPR, EPR, that stands for encourage, praise, and recognize. If you want to lead people, EPR people every day, every day. 
Encourage your people, praise them, recognize them. Your kids, if you want your kids to be great leaders someday, encourage your children, praise your kids, recognize them, all right? And, and you do this for your parents, right? Encourage your parents, praise your parents, recognize your parents, okay? Now, more than ever, you should be calling your parents every single day. I don't go a day, a day without calling my parents once or twice a day. A day. If for whatever reason I skip a day for some crazy weird reason, I even have a hard time sleeping that night, right? I just feel so bad and guilty. I tell my mom and my dad every single day how much I appreciate them and I recognize them as being the best parents that I could ever have had in my entire life. I, 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 I praise them for being such great parents to me, right? So you need to do that every single day. I want you to do that today, right? I want you to call somebody that you uh, are angry with, that you're pissed off with, that you uh, are, 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 uh, have a grudge against, right? And guess what? Call them and say, hey, you know what? Um, I've been mad but, uh, at you for different reasons, and I don't know why. It was 10 years ago, and I'm still holding on to that baggage. And I, and I just want to make amends, and I want us to be where we used to be, you know? Say something nice and encourage them, because you tell them, say, you know, you're such a great person, and uh, you, these are your strengths. You always made me feel this way, blah, blah, blah. And we had this misunderstanding and now we don't talk and I, I don't want to live that way. And so make amends, right? I mean, go back, call somebody that you're pissed off with. And little do you know that you might have the, you know, I went to my high school reunion uh, uh, a couple years ago and there was a girl and she came up to me and she said, John Shen, I have been thinking of you for X number of years. And I'm like, me? I'm like, what I do? And she says, when we were in elementary school, I'm like, yeah. She says, I was so mad at you. And I was like, me? And I go, for what? What did I do? And you know what's crazy is like, number one, I don't even remember what the hell she was talking about. Number two, I don't even remember her that well from elementary school. And she's held that grudge all these years. She came up to me and said, you know what? I just want to make amends. And I want to just get to know you better. And I was like, okay. And I was like, great, let's swap phone numbers. And after that reunion, we went out and had lunch. And it was like, wow. Okay. And, 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 and she cried and cried and cried. And I felt so bad that she's lived with this all her life. You guys, it's not even worth it. Some of you guys, you let other people control your life. And they don't even know that you've got this thing going on inside you. So Folks, do something like that this weekend, okay? Bring peace to your life. Bring peace and harmony now, okay? And I want you, as I said earlier, inject a massive amount of discipline into your life, okay? I want you to know there are three types of competency. One, those who see what needs to happen, those that need, uh, see what needs to happen, those who can make it happen, Okay, and those who can make things happen when it really counts. Let me just tell you something. Right now, more than ever, is when it really counts. Like, I need you to all step up like you've never done before, okay, and, and have some competency in yourself, faith in yourself. I want you to start getting into our calls every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Start getting around some big thinking people. I want you to get around with Randy Spelling and his, and his circle of influence you know, and start hanging around those kind of people. They may open doors for you and introduce you to other types of people, right? And then I want you to drill for skill. There's a lot to do with this that I don't want to get into right now. But listen, leaders need to know what they want. You need to know what you want right now, more than ever, right? I want you to start pointing, uh, start, have a starting point of all achievement is your burning desire. What is your desire? Okay, if you want to be an effective leader, you've got to know what it is that you want. How can you hit a target that you don't even have a target? What, how are you going to hit something when you don't even know what it is that you want? That is the only way you'll ever be able to recognize the opportunity when it comes is, you know, have hunger, be open-minded, be a crusader, okay? Now, 14 characters of a leader, and I'm going just a tad bit over time, and I'm going to be done here in just a few more slides, okay? Just a few more slides. They're like a magnet right? They're, they're characters of a leader, they're like a magnet. This is what you want to become. They're passionate in something, right? They're determined to win. Despite COVID-19, they're determined to win. They're going to go down fighting like a champion, right? 
and they've got big vision. They've got goals and they want to make a difference in the world. They make decisions quickly. They've got the ability to get people excited. Okay. And they're good people. They're just genuinely good people. Number eight, they're likable. And I did an episode on, on how to become more likable. Likable. You got to be positive all the time. Even like at a time right now, you've got to be positive. What do you want to be positive about? The fact that you just woke up and you're able to take a breath. How's that? Right? I mean, that in itself, you should be very excited <clears throat> and be positive about. Number 10, you, a, a leader is very friendly. They're outgoing. They're gregarious. Another uh, a leader is a characteristic of a leader. They don't complain to other people. Okay? They don't talk about people behind other people's back. Right? I mean, have some integrity. If you're going to do that, go directly and tell the person to their face. Don't tell everybody else. 13, you support all initiatives. 14, you're competitive. These are, this is what you got to have to be a great leader. All right. Now get, you know, if you're going to mentor people and develop people, your associate, your, 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 your mentee, your young Padawan, right? Get their commitment. You don't want to run an adult daycare center in business. Next thing you know, all you're doing is just dealing with everybody's problems. Okay. And uh, that becomes a nightmare. You know, and so when it comes to commitment, there are four types of people, folks. Okay, four types of people when it comes to um, commitment, right? Number one is uh, cop outs. There's a lot of cop outs out there today. People have no goals and don't commit, right? They're, they're just crazy people, man. There are a bunch of cop outs out there. Number two are holdouts, right? Holdouts. These are people who don't know if they can reach their goals. So they're afraid to commit. They just don't want to commit because they're like, well, that's not going to happen. You know, John's talking about making a million dollars. Well, that's not going to happen, right? And so, uh, so they don't want to commit. They don't even, they don't think they can reach their goals, right? Who, me? I'm going to make a hundred grand a year? Uh, no, it's okay. I'm good. Let me go watch Gilligan's Islands and that's going to change my life. All right. Number three, dropouts. People who start something and then when the going gets tough, they quit. They drop out. And there's a whole bunch of what? Dropouts out there today, right? A whole bunch. Uh, number four is what? All outs. These are the kind of people I'm looking for, right? So I'm looking for people who set goals, who commit to them. They pay the price to reach their goals and their dreams and their objectives, right? They go all out. And that's what it takes, even during a time of crisis. So my question for you is this. Are you a cop out? Are you a holdout? Are you a dropout? Or are you an all out? Which one of these are you? I think most of you are all outs. But if you're a cop out, then stop being a cop out and go all out. If you think you've been holding back, right? You've been holding out on us. Don't hold out anymore. We need you. You've got the talent. You've got the, the, the seeds of greatness in you right now. And if you're thinking about quitting, don't quit. Let me show you something. I want to show you a slide real fast. Let me get out of this. And uh, I want to show you them one slide about quitting. You got that one slide real fast? And then I'm going to show you this other slide about tomorrow. So I'm going to stop this here for a second. I got two slides and then I'm done. And then I want you to guys go and have a shintastic Saturday. I want you to have a shintastic Saturday today because it's beautiful. I want you to reach out. It was an old TV commercial or a telephone commercial from Pacific Bell. Like Pacific Bell, who the hell is that? Yeah, it said, reach out and touch someone. That, that was their tagline. Reach out and touch somebody. I want you to reach out and I want you to touch someone today. All right, now, if you're going to quit, let me just tell you this. If you're going to quit, I'm going to bring up this slide. All right, here we go. If you're going to quit or you're thinking of quitting, Here's, just write this down, okay? Just write this down. Quit making excuses. How's that? Ouch. If you're going to quit, quit making excuses. You have a disease. It's called excusitis. Excusitis. You're using that disease, right? That's a pandemic in itself, right? Number two, quit blaming everybody else. Number three, Quit being lazy, okay? Wake up, folks. Money is not going to come down from the skies. you got to go out there and seize your, what's rightfully yours. 
Quit waiting for the right time. Now's the right time, everyone, okay? Next one, quit relying on your associates to do something or your spouse. If your spouse isn't doing anything now, what makes you think they're gonna do anything, right? You go do it. Suddenly when you do it, now all of a sudden your, your spouse will do it, okay? I mean, they'll start coming after you start doing something, all right? Quit going on vacations you can't afford. You know, it just blew my mind, blew my mind that, uh, um, you know, we were watching on Facebook some friends, you know, and they're struggling. They're really struggling. And so, you know, they were on one of my podcasts and they saw that they can go get an EIDL loan, EIDL. So they got this loan. They got $150,000. And instead of taking that money and investing that money and uh, into their business and keeping their business going, they actually took that money and went on a vacation. And now they, they went to Hawaii. They're in Hawaii. They're enjoying their lives in Hawaii right now and staying at uh, one of their family's houses, right? But they're out there, you know, having a good time with $150,000 and not focusing on their business. And when they come back and their business is gone, they're going to go, oh, how did this happen, right? So quit focusing on vacations you can't afford. Next, quit buying shit every day you don't need. Uh, yeah, you're on Amazon. You're buying stuff. You're on Wayfair. You're buying stuff. Stop spending money right now, people, okay? Until this pandemic is over, we don't know where your future is going to look like. So, hey, save your money. Save, 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 all right? And quit quitting. How's that? Think about that. Think about all the things that you started and you quit over your whole lifetime. So a lot of us have a habit of quitting. So let's get you to stop, quit, quit quitting. So if you're going to quit or think about quitting, you know, why don't you think of this slide? Take a picture of that and do me a favor. Don't post this all over Facebook and Instagram, okay? Uh, this is my content, and I, uh, don't post this slide. I've got a bunch of other webinars that I got to do today. You can post it in a week, but not this weekend, all right? Um, so that's that. Now, let me go over this one last slide and let you guys know that our boot camp, Make That Change, is on August 8th. I'm doing an orientation. Uh, August 8th at 2 o'clock. It'll probably go from 2 to 3, maybe. I mean, excuse me, 2 to uh, for 3 hours, from 2 to 5. I just put 2 to 6. I'm going to probably end earlier, but make sure that you register. If you're serious about being mentored by me, I want you to enroll in this program. It's orientation, okay? Now, this orientation is free. There's no charge, no fee. Come and join us uh, uh, Saturday, August 8th from 2 to 6. And let me tell you what this is all about. Let me share with you what I want to teach you uh, over five classes, over five classes. And I'm going to show you a lot of wonderful things. So make sure you do that. All right. Now I'm going to get out of this. And uh, give me one second. Um, and then I've got uh, one little slide. And then I'm done. Let's see here. <clears throat> Was it this one? Yeah. All right. Here we go. So, as I said, next week on Tuesday, for those of you that joined us late, we've got Mauricio Bauza, and you got to make sure that you register right here. And then finally, I just want to reiterate that next Saturday, our Shintastic Saturday will be canceled due to the fact that we have this event with Randy Spelling, and uh, that will be from 10 to 5 o'clock p.m. So make sure that you register. you got to email Anna at tgrmastermind.com. We do have, again, just a few spots left. It is a first-come, first-served basis. We look forward to uh, spending this day with you on Saturday. Again, if you need to reach me, this is my information. That is my cell phone number up there in the corner. If you feel like you need so to talk to somebody, uh, you're just having some difficult times, hey, reach out to me. I'd love to chat with you, okay? I want to help you. I want to guide you. And uh, you can follow me on all these different social media platforms. I wish you guys all a fantastic Saturday. It is a beautiful day. God bless every single one of you guys. Continue to wear your mask, social distance, and we'll see you this coming Tuesday with Mauricio Bauza. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Thanks for joining us today.